Today, for the seventh time in our political history, we stand on the threshold of a peaceful transition from one democratic government to another, from the Buhari administration to the Tinubu administration. For the Buhari administration, eight years of two complete terms, and that we're alive and well to witness this day, we bless the name of the creator of the heaven and the earth, and one to whom all life belongs. And so on behalf of President Muhammad Buhari and his family and his administration, I thank the almighty God for his grace and mercy and his generosity to us. God is interested in nations. When he speaks to a person, it is as a proxy to a nation. Speaking to Abraham, as soon as he called him to service, he said, I will make you a great nation. And in Genesis 22, verse 18, he spoke to Abraham again concerning Isaac, his son. And he said, in you, in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. God continually spoke to individuals as and he spoke to them as proxies to nations. Speaking in 1 Peter 2 verse 9 about born-again Christians, he speaks again about a nation. He says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. God speaks about nations, and he's interested in nations. He is the real builder of nations, and he's certainly interested in prospering nations. So we must involve him and listen to him as we build our nation. According to Solomon, in Psalm 127 verse 1, the scripture says, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. God is the builder and the protector of nations. But then he has two instructions, two instructions that he gives to nations. One to leadership and the other to the people. He gives one instruction to leadership and the other to the people. In Proverbs 4, 14 verse 34, Proverbs 14 verse 34, he issues an instruction to leadership in particular, where he says, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to anybody, to any people. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Every successful nation requires integrity at the level of leadership. And when we say leadership, we're referring to the elite the political, the business, and the religious elite of any society. Not just the political elite, but the business elite as well as the religious elite. God demands of the elite that we must be righteous. And this is so, whether it is Dubai or Nigeria or Tanzania. No country can be great if its elite is corrupt, if it's self-serving, or living for themselves. That is the instruction of God. The second instruction he gives to the people and instructs the people in Jeremiah 29 verse 7. Jeremiah 29 verse, 20, 29 verse 7. And he says in Jeremiah 29 verse 7, and I'm, and I'm going to quote the NLT, that's the New Living Translation, where he says, and work, and he's instructing the people, and you, the people, work for the peace and prosperity of the city where I have sent you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it for its welfare will determine your own welfare. He says that we, the people, must work and pray for the prosperity and welfare of the nation. In 1 Timothy 2 verse 1 to 2, 1 Timothy 2 verse 1 to 2, he says, therefore I exhaust first that we have supplications, prayers and intercessions, and the giving of thanks to be made for all men 
And in verse 2, it says, For kings and all men in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. God instructed not just the captives of, of, of Nebuchadnezzar, that's the scripture that I quoted earlier in Jeremiah, but he has instructed us even in these times that we must pray and work for the peace and prosperity of our country and that we must, as individuals, pray for the leadership of our country. The people of God, in particular, have a duty to pray and work for the peace and prosperity of this nation, regardless of party, regardless of parochial considerations, regardless of who you voted for, and regardless of who you did not vote for. Tomorrow, tomorrow, a new government will be born. Concerning Jesus Christ, Scripture says that from birth, he grew in stature, in wisdom, and in favor with God. So I pray these same words for the president-elect, Senator Bola Tinubu, GCFR, and the vice president-elect, Senator Kashim Shatima, GCON, and the new government, that as their days in office, so shall they grow in stature, in wisdom, and in favor with the almighty God. Amen. And I pray also for our nation. I pray that this nation will prosper and that the Lord God Almighty will have his hand upon this nation, that our land and our people will live in peace and security in Jesus' mighty name. And I pray for all who are here, each and every one of you will be blessed in this land. And you will live long to enjoy the fruits of God's blessings on this land. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Amen. Amen.